his holy name. Well, glory be to God. Well, it's offering time. Hallelujah. We're here to give unto the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, give unto the ministry, praise God, so he can take our, 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 our seeds that we sow in love into the kingdom and cause us to reap of love in the kingdom. Why? Because we give because we love God and love people. Hallelujah. So that's why I tithe and that's why I give. Praise his holy name. Man, we're just so thankful that Jesus makes a way for us to be able to be blessed financially so we can give more to his kingdom to bless all over the world and our community. Praise his holy name. Man, don't, don't forget that every fourth Sunday is Mission Sunday, and any month we have a fifth Sunday, it's Stretch Offering Sunday. So, man, just be praying for you know, to the Father and ask Him to give you money to give into those times. It's only four times a, a year we have stretch offering, and then every month we have missions. But just remember, 
You know, John chapter 15, verse 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and you shall receive it. So that's what I base my giving on. I ask him, you know, for extra money to send to me so that I can give extra into his kingdom. And I just believe that his word's true. And if I do what his word says, he'll do what his word says. Hallelujah. So don't be speaking things against you being able to give into his kingdom. If something arises and an offering happens and you can't give, say, well, praise God, Lord, I don't know what happened this time, but I'm just thankful that next time I'm going to have plenty enough money to give. And bind the devil from interfering with your, your money and your finances and command him to take his hands off of it because that's more your responsibility than God's because he's done gave me and you all the power to take care of that. So I bind the enemy from stopping the finances that belong to the people that will give into the kingdom and give to True Christian Fellowship. I command you to take your hands off the money that belongs to our church and I thank you, Lord, the money's coming in to build our church and to buy a van for fellowships. Hallelujah, and for, for the teens and the other people to have it to drive so everybody can ride together. And I thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Well, don't forget, you know, just write on your envelope your full address. Write on your envelope what what place you want the money to go into. And there's three things that ain't on here in that stretch offering. So anytime you put in the stretch offering, you just write stretch on here somewhere. And anytime you put into the, the new church or building, just write new church. And anytime you put it into the van, just write van on there. And, and we'll, um, you know, when we get new ones, we'll have that added on probably. But we're just thanking the Lord for taking care of every situation, every circumstance in our church, always coming through, and He always shows out. Hallelujah. So, Father, we just thank you right now. We praise you right now. We give you glory right now. We, we lift up our offerings to worship you from here, and we're thanking you that you're doing things above what we could even ask or think. And we give you all praise for meeting every need in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise God. It's Wednesday. Hallelujah. And we're continuing in, in Him. This is part six, man, confessions. you, you got to confess the Word to make it become faith realities in your life. Man, we got to learn that the Word is the most important thing in the whole universe, atmosphere, everywhere. And we need to be speaking the words of Christ into the atmosphere around us to change what's going on around us in our world. Praise God, man. Well, it's a, been a rainy day, but man, I'm, I'm so thankful the rain's coming to the church. The Holy Ghost rain. The former and the latter rain. We're going to see revival like never before. We're going to be part of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to do what the Lord says to do so that we can rest in His presence and He'll come and do whatever He wants to do. Man, praise God. Man, wasn't that a good service Sunday? Man, them praise reports. Some of y'all gave praise reports that you ain't never uh, really gave any. Man, they blessed me. Y'all blessed me Sunday. Praise God with them reports and praise reports and uh, testimonies. And man, I'm just so thankful for what Jesus is doing and what He's going to continue to do in our life. Man, He I just see him coming to pass and everything that we ask him for. Glory be to God. Man, I'm so thankful for people getting saved, giving their whole life to Christ. I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit telling us things. And I'm just so thankful, man. Jesus is everything to me. And I hope he is to you. Praise God. Well, we're going to start off with our our, our uh, text. Uh, well, our, our verse... Uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10. This is our, you know, starting out text on this confessions and because th that is the great confession. And, uh, you got to do this confession and you got to get this in your life, working in your life before you can even move on to the other confessions because you ain't even in Christ, in Him or, or in whom you're not in none of it unless you're in Christ first and you got to get in Him by confessing He's your Lord and believing in your heart God raised Him from the dead and uh, and you use this for confession for all the rest of them to get healing, to get finances, to get everything. It's, it's based on the same principle. And Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the mouth, uh, verse 10, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And salvation we know is three parts. So with the mouth confession is made unto escaping the second death, which is going to hell 
deal with the mouth. Confession is made unto prosperity because you bro Jesus broke the spirit of lack. And uh, confession is made unto healing because Jesus broke the, the spirits of sickness and disease. And he, he made a way for me and you to walk in health and healing every single day of our life, man. So we need to believe his word and don't believe uh, uh, what the world's saying, what the world system's saying. We need to quit worrying uh, so much about what's going on in the White House and worry about what's going on in the church house. Hallelujah. Man, let's get the church house right. If we would get the church house right, the body of Christ right, all this other stuff will work itself out hallelujah we need the church right man you you can't even get people to come to church and be faithful why are you worried about what's going on in, in, up at the white house man you need to get yourself right with god and get in the house of god and worry about just worshiping him and concentrate on him let him work out all the other stuff sure pray for him like he told us to but he only told us to pray for him so we can live a quiet and peaceable life there's so much wickedness in this world, but Jesus didn't come for me and you to focus on the wickedness. He came for me and you to focus on Him. Hallelujah. So get your eyes off all this mess and get your eyes on the Master and start saying out of your mouth what you believe His Word has said about you. Hallelujah. I believe in my heart Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe He was raised from the dead. For my justification, I confess Him. He is my Lord. You need to start telling people, Jesus is your Lord and He's your Savior. Jesus is my Lord. He's dominating my life. You need to tell people, He's dominating my life. I don't get to make choices about... Uh, I, my choice is to serve Him and do what He says. So I don't have to make a choice about the other stuff. It's already made in serving Him and He's my Lord. Hallelujah. He's guiding me and He is leading me. That's who Jesus is and that's what He does in your life when you make Him your Lord. You don't, when you make, make the decision to make Him your Lord and you're going to follow Him and do what He says, you ain't got to make the decisions no more about going to church, tithing and giving, uh, reading your Bible, praying, being submitted to authority, loving your enemies. Uh, hallelujah, you ain't got to worry about that no more uh, as far as making that decision because when you make your decision that Jesus is Lord in being obedient, you're going to do the other stuff. All, all it is is when I see people, I, it, it, the Lord just talking to me more and more about people that, you know, when people don't go to church and they don't give and they don't tithe and they're not reading the Bible, they don't love their enemies, they hate the government. When all this is going on in their life, guess what? You want the, the true revelation of what's going on in your life when that's happening in your life? Jesus Christ is not your Lord. And the Bible says for me and you to be saved, we have to confess out of our mouth He's our Lord and believe in our heart God raised Him from the dead. Well, when you believe in your heart God raised Him from the dead and you make Him the Lord of your life, then you do what He says. Man, Jesus told us in Luke 6, 46, don't call me Lord, Lord. and don't. And, and, he said, why are you calling me Lord, Lord and don't do the things I tell you? So we know if He's mine and your Lord and we confess that, then we have to do what He says to prove that He's our Lord. Hallelujah. A lot of people out here saying Jesus is their Savior and Lord, and He ain't because they ain't doing what He says. They're lying. They got a false Jesus. They got a fake Jesus. The, the, the devil is deceiving them to think they're going to be okay when they die and they'll go to heaven. And he's got them convinced that they don't have to go to church. They don't have to give into the kingdom. Don't have to read the Bible. Don't have to pray. There's no hell. You ain't got to worry about it. All your sins are forgiven. Grace covers everything. You don't have to love your enemies. You don't have to forgive people. No, that's the deception of the devil. No, if you're going to go and, and, and be with a holy God for eternity, you better get your life right down here. Because this is what you're here for is to get yourself right with Him. So quit making excuses and start obeying Him. Amen? And hopefully we'll see some of y'all Sunday in church. Hallelujah. So we can see the fruit in your life that Jesus is your Lord. Because when we don't see you in church, and, we don't, and those of y'all that come to church, and we don't see you doing what we know you're supposed to do, then we don't see the fruit that He's your Lord. We see the fruit that the devil's running your life and, and you're obeying him and doing what he said and we're going to keep praying for you until you repent and return to God. Hallelujah. That's what it's all about is getting right with him. Well, let's go to Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. Praise God. Chapter 2 and verse 20. It says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, 
who loved me and gave himself for me. See, we got to know right here that Jesus, to be crucified with him, means that you died with him. And you're no longer controlled by the flesh. I don't, I don't live by the flesh is what this says. I live by faith in the Son of God. I like what the Message Bible says. My ego is no longer central. In other words, what, when, when you're really crucified with Christ, and it's not your, you, you're not living in your flesh no more, but you're living by faith in the Son of God, that ego, the, the part of you that wants to be important, can't be important no more and can't run your life no more because it ain't you you're worried about and concerned about uh, looking good in people's eyes. It's Christ living in you that you want them to see. See, it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ liveth in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Hallelujah. Why? Because He loved me and He gave Himself for me. Man, some of y'all need to get the revelation of how much Jesus really loves you and how much He gave uh, uh, for you to live in victory every day in this life and, and to live in victory every day over the circumstances and situations that you face in life every day. Man, it's time for me and you just to just to learn to follow Him and do what He says. Hallelujah. And, 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 and just uh, believe that He's the one. He cannot change. He cannot change. Jesus can't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you need to believe that and follow Him. And quit trying to make excuses for why you're doing and why you're living the way you... Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 1, verse 26-27 through 27 says, Even the mystery which hath been hid from the ages and from the generations, but now is made manifest to His saints. Man, you, you say, well, I'm not a saint. I'm an old sinner. Not, now, if you're born again and you confess Jesus as your Lord and, and believe when your heart God raised Him from the dead, you ain't a sinner no more. You're a saint according to what Jesus says about you. So you need to believe what He said about you and quit believing what the world's telling you, what your flesh is telling you, what the enemy's telling you. No, I'm a saint of Christ. Hallelujah, I'm His. I belong to Him. I do what He says. you got to confess that stuff and believe it. Man, and start just flowing in the Spirit and letting the Holy Ghost lead and guide and direct you. That's what you got to do. That's why you need to be in church. If you're a born-again Christian, the Holy Ghost may want to use you in that service. Hallelujah. To whom God, verse 27, Colossians 1, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentile. You know what that is? Which is Christ. Christ is the riches of mystery. The riches of the glory of the myst this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the mystery in the Gentiles. The riches of His glory is Christ. Man, Christ is the one. He, man, Christ is the great one. And where is He? According to this verse, He's in me. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. The one sent from God who knows everything lives inside of me and you that are born again. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. And He's our Lord. Then He lives inside of me and you. Praise God. Christ lives in me. You need to confess that. Christ lives in me. The one sent from God who knows everything lives inside of me. Hallelujah. And you need to live that way every day. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1 and verses 4 through 6 says, And you have He quickened, He's made alive. Not going to, not one day you'll be alive. No, when you get born again, He hath quickened you and made you alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. At one time in mind in your life, we were dead in trespasses and sin. But Christ has made us alive. Hallelujah. I'm alive in Christ. Praise God. And verse 4 says, But God, who is rich in mercy. Guess what God is? Rich in mercy. You need to tell people God's rich in mercy. Man, mercy. He shows me mercy. I, I get what I, I... I shouldn't deserve it, but I get it anyway because I submit myself to Him and Jesus is my Lord. So if something happens in my life and I miss it, then mercy comes running to me. 
Amen. Mercy comes running. Uh, goodness, I, I like Psalms 20, uh, 23, 6. Goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. So uh, come on, goodness. Come on, mercy. Keep up with me. Why? Because I want goodness working in my life. Goodness is kindness. I want that working in my life, and I want mercy. Amen. I want mercy working in my life. Praise God. And, and the reason you get mercy is because you give mercy. Remember Luke 6, 38. That's part of that whole scripture. They talk about money given. It shall be given unto you. Good measure of prison. Now shaking together. Running over shall men give unto your bosom. It's talking about forgiveness, mercy, love. All Give that to people. And when you have a need of it, it'll come back to you. Men will give it back to you. Press down, shaking together, and running over. Hallelujah. Man, just follow Jesus and do what He says every day. Why is God rich in mercy? For His great love wherewith He loved us. He loved me with His great love. When I didn't deserve to be loved, He loved me anyway. He loved me first. Glory to God. This morning when I got up, I said, Jesus, I love You because You loved me first. See, He paved the way. He opened the door for me and you to live in, 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 in Him and what He's done. He did all that for us. He was the pre-runner for me and you to follow. He, he was the model in everything that God did. He was the model that followed everything God told Him to and to show me and you how to do it. He was our example to follow and to show the people that it can be done. So even when we were dead in our sins, verse 5, have quickened us together with Christ. Even when we were dead in our sins, He quickened us together with Christ. By grace, ye are saved. What's grace? It's the, it's the ability of God's love to work everything out in your heart. Amen. It's a division. It's a, it's a line drawn. It's, it's a heart condition that you change to follow Christ. Man, grace. You know, we, Everybody will say unmerited favor, and that's part of it. But grace is the ability of God's love working in me and you so we don't have to sin. It's not the ability to keep sinning and then because you're sinning more, grace will be there more. No, Paul had told us, God forbid, in that. No, we're supposed to be living in such a way that, that we don't have to live in uh, wanting to get forgiveness all the time because we don't need it because we're walking and following Him. Amen. God don't want us repenting all the time unless you're in sin. He wants us to live in such a way we don't have to repent because we're living holy before Him. Amen. How do you do that? In Christ, the one that loved you, the one that, that brought you together, the one that by grace you are saved, the one that you confess, He's my Lord, I believe in Him in my heart. God raised Him from the dead. Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. I do what He says. I obey Him. I follow Him. And therefore, He works through me for people to get healed and set free. I lay my hands on the sick and they do recover. Amen. You need to believe that stuff. You don't need to believe, oh Lord, I did this. No, get forget. You, if you're out there saying, I did this, then you ain't got the heart to repent. Because if you've done something, your first thing should be to get to Him and repent and get the blood to apply it. Sure, you ain't been coming to church. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I, I, I need you to help me, Holy Ghost. And then be at church. Praise God, man. Well, I ain't been tithing. Lord, forgive me. Change me. I know in my heart that you can do more with that 90% than I can do with the, with the 100%. So, Lord, forgive me. I'm going to start tithing this Sunday, and I'm going to believe you're going to take care of me. Hallelujah. And tithe is 10% of your income. Quit letting the devil cheat you out of the blessings of God because he wants to give you another doctor. Now, the doctrine's already in the book. Amen. You just need enlightenment on it and you need the Lord to change you so you obey Him without questioning Him. See, the disciples finally learned in Mark, uh, uh, Mark 16, no, Matthew 16, uh, 33, they finally learned that they don't need to question Him because He knows everything. So why are you and me keep questioning Him on things? No, He knows everything. He knows how to bless you if you'll be obedient to Him in finances. He will bless you. He knows how to heal you if you'll be obedient to Him and do what He says. He'll heal your body and set you free you got to confess who you are in Christ. Quit making those excuses and saying things you shouldn't be saying, but speak only those things that line up with the Word. You're not lying when you speak the truth according to God's Word. You are not telling a lie. Man, the Word's the most important thing in your life. And next week we'll get to where we'll start going through the Bible and just through the Scriptures and just reading them and seeing who we are in Him, in Christ, in whom. And some that, that don't say that in there, but it relates to that. 
You've got to give the Scriptures in you, these powerful Scriptures, to tell who you are in Christ. Verse 6 says, "...and has raised us up together." He's already raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. In the spiritual realm as a Christian, I've already been raised up by God to sit with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Hallelujah. So really, I'm far above. I'm far above all the mess that's going on in the world. If you really see where you are positionally in Christ, I'm far above all this mess. I'm far above principalities, powers, and wickedness in high places. And I have power to defeat them in every situation because it was given to me by Christ. I just We just ain't walking in what belongs to us. Hallelujah. Man, we need to repent and start walking in the power that's been given to us through the Word of Jesus. The message that came from the lips of the Messiah Himself. Find out what His doctrine is and live in accordance with it. That's what the Word tells us to do, praise God. So that's what we got to do. Amen? Hallelujah. See, the confession of this, I am crucified with Christ. All these scriptures I just read, I done made one confession, this is another one. I am crucified with Christ. When He was quickened and made alive, I was quickened with Him. I was raised up together with Him. Amen. And made to sit together, what? With Him in heavenly places. Today, Today, come on now, quit thinking about the uh, next uh, next year, 10 years, 20 years, when I get to heaven. No, today, I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. Today, y'all, today, you need to say that, man. Today, I am seated in heavenly places with Christ. Well, when you're seated in heavenly places with Christ, and He's your Lord, you do what He says. Man, quit letting your family hold you back from serving Jesus the way you know you're supposed to in your heart. I can't tell you how many of y'all have told me, I'm coming to church, I'll be at church, I got to get this right, that right, I got to buy this, do this, I ain't got this, I don't have that. No, you need to quit all them excuses because remember, excuses are tools in the hands of the incompetent that often build monuments to nothingness. And you've been making excuses so long. That's why that's just part of your life now is an excuse life when it comes to Jesus Christ and it comes to the church and the living God. No, you need to repent and be at church and start a habit of coming to church and serving Jesus. And quit worrying about what you look like, what you got, what's going on. Just come and serve Him and praise Him. Amen. And I'm so thankful for Jesus. I'm so thankful, man, for the people that started coming to church. And I'm so thankful God's going to teach them how to follow Him. Man, y'all need to come to church and explore what God got for you. Man, it's awesome to follow Jesus. He's wonderful. There ain't nobody like Him. Except for those that follow His Word and His doctrine. Then you can be just like Him. Praise God. Man, I'm just so thankful. Man, I'm so thankful. I hope you're thankful. Man, I'm, he said in all things, give him thanks. Man, I am just thankful. I just praise God. I'm so thankful, y'all. Y'all just don't know how thankful I am to all y'all that's been coming to church and been thankful that you're faithful. Man, but I'm so thankful God's bringing more in. I'm so thankful for Hank and Rhea and, and their kids. And I'm so thankful, you know, for Sunday, for Shane and Michelle coming. And I'm so thankful for them giving their heart to Jesus. I'm so thankful for, 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 for Loyal and Michelle and Antonio came Sunday. You know, I'm so thankful for people coming and, and hooking up with True Christian Fellowship, but I'm so thankful that some of y'all that ain't been coming, you're coming. Man, you're coming to church. I'm believing that. I'm praying for you. I'm believing you're going to put away the flesh and you're going to rise up and do what the Master's called you to do, especially if you say you're born again. We need to see some fruit in your life. Jesus told us, He taught us, you can tell that they're mine by the fruit that you see in their life. So really, we're all fruit inspectors. You say, well, don't judge me. Well, you've got to be judged to see that you're not following Jesus. But I'm not judging you to condemn you. I'm judging you and giving you a way out. Get to the blood of Jesus, repent, and come and do what He's told you to do. Praise God. Come and help us at True Christian Fellowship. Come hook up with us. Pray, hook up with us for the vision God's called us to do. 
Man, we're so thankful people's coming, but we're so thankful there's more. They're coming from the north, south, east, and west to fill up the house for the glory of God. Hey, man, we're, going, we're building a family of God at True Christian Fellowship. And those of y'all that God's called to be there, we miss y'all. Man, come on and hook up with us. Praise God. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 19. But my God, Man, you need to let when when the devil's attacking your finances and you're doing all that you know to do to, to, to be obedient to him and faithful to him, you got to tell the devil, but my God, I'm a giver, devil, and my God shall supply all. You hear that, devil? All my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Not my riches, but his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, the one who's sent from God who knows everything. Jesus, what He taught, what He said, what He did. His doctrine. And as I live in accordance to His doctrine of the One who knows everything, that, that, that was sent from God who knows everything, guess what? He supplies all my need. My God does. Through His riches. Not mine, not what I can do. Now you're supposed to work. Do all you can do. If you don't work, you ain't supposed to eat. But you're supposed to work. Hallelujah. So, and the Lord will take care of you. What you can't do, He'll, He'll do. All this mess going on the last couple of days about this gas and people lined up. I mean, I'm talking about for a mile or two lined up to get gas and fighting and fussing over gas. Let me just tell you something. If something happens and all the gas in the world disappeared, the Lord Jesus who supplies all my need, God who supplies all my need according to His riches uh, in Christ Jesus in glory, he just had to put some gas in my car supernaturally or he'll have to make a way to where I can drive with, without any gas. You just got to have that faith. See, I got faith because I heard stories of people that drove to revivals for two weeks on empty. Hallelujah. And if you really don't have no way to get gas, you can believe God and He'll take care of you. Supernaturally, He'll take care of you to get you where He wants you to be and needs you to be. Hallelujah. So quit making excuses of why you ain't doing what God's told you to do. Man, surely He can take care of us. He said all things are possible to him that believes. So why don't you just believe that, that all things are possible? And start believing. Hallelujah. Because according to this right here, all my needs are supplied. All You need to start saying that. All my needs are supplied. Come on, let me hear you say it. All my needs are supplied. Look at your neighbor. If you if you got somebody there with you, look at them and say, let me tell you something. All my needs are supplied. How? Well, they supplied according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus. So just let people know, man, all my needs are supplied. I'm just here to tell you that He ain't never let me down and ain't going to let me down. All my needs are supplied. Man, you need to let people know that. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. It said, Blessed be the God. Man, blessed be mine and your God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. You need to worship Him for who He is and how He's blessed you in Christ Jesus. Blessed be the God and the Father of my Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. He's already blessed us with all spiritual blessings. You need to quit trying to get them and just know that you're blessed with spiritual blessings. Hallelujah. What's a spiritual blessing? Healing power working in your body. What's a spiritual blessing? All my needs are met through Him. I'm a tither and a giver. I'm faithful to Him, so therefore He takes care of me. What's a spiritual blessing? I'm hooked up with Him, and what I ask Him for, He does. What's a spiritual blessing? That He showed me in His Word how to love my enemies. He showed me how to do that. It's actually Him working in me doing that. What's the spiritual blessing? I obey His commandment. His commandment is how much He loved me and forgave me, and I received that. And the other commandment, the second one, is to go out and love people the exact same way He loved me. That's a spiritual blessing. What's the spiritual blessing? Having people in your life that teach you the Word of God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that you're supposed to communicate them with double honor. Praise God. And that means financially. Hallelujah. That's wealth when you look it up in the, in the Greek. That means wealth too. So you're supposed to bless them with double honor. 
Hallelujah, man. I, I got some people at True Christian Fellowship that bless me, their pastor. And I'm so thankful for them. Hallelujah. It takes, it takes worry off of you. Well, you. You shouldn't have your pastor have, worrying about finances and all that. If God's blessed you, you should bless Him. Hallelujah. Man, I like the story back when Deion Sanders... Man, when he got saved, you know, I don't know I don't know the state of his life right now. I don't know, but I know back when he got saved, him and uh, Michael Irwin, they went to their pastor, uh, the story is, and they gave him a few million dollars because they didn't want him to be poor and them be rich. Man, people need to get a hold of that. that you, you need to bless the, 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 your pastor and you need to you, you ask God for money so you can bless them. Praise God. I do. I ask God to send me extra money so I can I can bless Pastor Scales and give him offerings. Praise God, man! I I'm thankful that God's blessed me in that way. Praise God, and you need to be too. You don't need to look at that and think, "Oh man, they don't need nothing." No, you need to look at it and say, "Lord, what would you have me do?" He may tell you something, man. I've had people come to the church, y'all, totally submitted under Pastor Robert, you know, which is is me, and they would tell me stuff like, "Man." You don't need to do this. You don't need to do that. You need to be full time at the church. And then a month later, they'd be gone. I, I had one tell me the Lord told me to bless you financially uh, uh, every week, and and they did until uh, a few months later they got you know offended and left. Well, God don't change what He says, y'all. God is the same. When you get offended, and leave a church. God don't change. If He called you that church, He still looks at you at being that church. Amen. If you're in another church and you, you're disobedient, He don't see you coming and worshiping Him and all that stuff and magnifying Him. He sees you in disobedience. Just like that woman that Dad Hagen told about. God told her 40 years ago to go to the mission field and everybody in the church thought she was this great, precious woman. And God said it was a stench to Him every day because of her disobedience 40 years ago. Man, don't let your life be a stench to God and the devil got you tricked and confused and think you're okay. Now repent and get on back and do what God's called you to do. Praise God. Amen. If you notice that verse we just read, it don't say He's going to bless you. It says He already has blessed you. Already has blessed you with spiritual things. It, that means that in Christ Jesus, from the time you were born again until you step into eternity, He has already made provision for me and you. So if we don't walk in that provision, it's because we've done something that's uh, cut off that provision because He's already made that provision available t to me and you. He he's already provided everything you need in Christ Jesus. So if you walk around saying, I got a need, it's because you ain't got the Christ yet to get that need met because in Him every need is met. He, he's blessed me and you with everything that pertains to life. It's... it's you, it is yours in the mind of God. It's already done. In the mind of God, it's mine and yours. He's already done it. He ain't changing His mind. Me and you have to activate it by faith. He's already. You need to find the provisions that He's provided for me and you in His Word. Make them become a reality in your life in Christ to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. If you're sick, afflicted, in pain, you have to find in Scripture where He's healed you and set you free. And you have to confess that till it becomes a reality in your life. If you're broke and upset, you know, things in your life are just upset and uh, unrest, you know, in your life, you've got to get to God, repent, do what He tells you to do concerning your finances, and believe Him to come through for you financially. Believe Him to take care of you because His Word said He already has. So quit making excuses of why you're not following Him. Line up the, uh, the Word of God with your mouth. Speak out what He says. Become a, uh, make a faith confession and make it become a reality in your life. Hallelujah. Well, praise God, man. I just enjoyed that. And uh, starting next week, we're going to go through scriptures, you know. I don't know how many times that or how many uh, different uh, services we'll have on that. But the scripture, y'all, is the most important thing that me and you can, can, can go to. Amen. Man, so I love you. Vet loves you, man. Hopefully, we'll see y'all Sunday. Remember, prayers at 9.45 now. Church starts at 10.30. And then YouTube at 6.45 on Wednesday night. Man, don't forget, revival's coming up, our spring revival. Pastor Skills is coming down. This year it's going to be from Wednesday uh, at 7, Thursday at 7, Friday at 7, Saturday at 6, and Sunday morning at 10.30. 
And that's going to be June the 2nd through June the 6th. Amen. So we just believe in God that powerful, mighty things are going to happen at Revival. So keep praying. Pray for the church. Pray for the Revival coming up. And uh, just pray for me. Man. We'll, and we'll hopefully we'll see you Sunday and fill up the house of God for the glory of God. Love you guys. Well, we're so thankful. Man, it is altar call time. Praise God. So if you're here today, you know, if you listen to the message today and uh, we're just so thankful that you joined in with us today. We're, and if you need to give your whole life to Jesus right now, we want you to, 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 to repeat after me. Say, Father, I come to you today. I believe your word. I've been convicted today of sin in my life. Lord, I thank you for rescuing me from my sins. I thank you for shedding your blood and presenting an offering to the Father that took away all my sin. Now, Father, I believe right now in Jesus. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord. Father, I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. And according to your word right now, I'm born again. Now, Father, I've believed in him. I'm relying on clinging to and trusting in him. Now, Father, make me a disciple. Show me Jesus' doctrine and let someone put me under someone that will teach me how to follow His doctrine and live in accordance with it. If you don't have a church home, make your church home True Christian Fellowship and come and let Pastor Robert be over you in the Lord and I'll teach you how to follow Jesus through the teachings of Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, if you've uh, given your whole life to Jesus, man, just send me a, a uh, if you got my phone number, send me a text. If you don't, then send me an email. Just, just, just please take the time and send me an email at GodIsSlapAwesome at BellSouth.net so I can give a praise report on the air of what God's did in your life. Amen. Hey, and that goes for all y'all watching that's in the church and God's doing things for you. I've been telling you now to send me praise reports through my email address or text me. And if you've got one and ain't done it, then people are missing out on hearing your report because the Bible says make your deeds known among the people. So if he's done anything for you, you need to let me know through email or through a text so I can do it on the next service and say, man, we just want to praise God for God doing this in so-and-so's life. Amen. Hey, we're so thankful. And Lord, right now, we're, we're believing that your word says we can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. We can send your word and people can get healed. So right now, if there's any problem in your body, the doctors gave you a bad report, no matter what it is, right now I ask you to put your hand on that. I'm going to stretch forth my hand. I'm believing right now in Jesus' name. The anointing is flowing through this coming into you wherever your hand is, and we're driving out that demonic force that's trying to attack itself to your body, and you're going to walk totally healthy, healed, and whole. You're a healed woman in a healthy body. You're a healed man in a healthy body. Now just receive that, and receive it with thanksgiving, and praise God that you've been delivered from whatever that circumstance is. Amen. And just let him know how thankful you are that you're walking in victory in Jesus. Amen. And we're just so thankful for y'all. We can't wait to, to, to see y'all again. And uh, man, we love y'all so much. And uh, uh, we, we praise God for you. We praise God for you. We're so thankful for you. Hallelujah. And don't forget, if you're doing your offering by mail, don't forget to send it. If you're doing it by the church, drop it off, put it in the slot. And we're so thankful for y'all, your faithfulness. And we praise God for you. And we thank God for you. Amen. And we thank God for more coming. In Jesus' name, amen.